Good morning everyone or good evening or good afternoon depending on when you're watching. It's actually morning here so good morning and a very warm welcome back to What's For Tea. It's lovely to see you all again or if you're new a warm welcome to you also. This is What's For Tea. My name is Cheryl and I'm going to be taking you through a very easy simple classic syrup steamed sponge pudding <laughs> recipe. This is you know it's absolutely delicious. This recipe is years old and it's one my gran actually used to make. Like I said, it's super easy, absolutely delicious. It's a very simple basin pudding with a lovely moist sponge and a, a you know, such a sticky sauce. It's a great British tradition and it's got proper retro charm. I just love all things retro and if it's old school, you know, chances are I'm going to love it. So I'm going to show you what I'm using to make this sponge pudding today. And if you want to check back later, you'll find all of the ingredients as usual listed in the description box down below. And I've also got ounces down there as well because not everybody uses grams. So the first thing I've got is four tablespoons of golden syrup. I'm just using lions. I've got 175 grams, which is about six ounces of room temperature butter. You can use salted or unsalted, it doesn't matter. I've also got 175 grams, which is six ounces again, of self-raising flour. I've got 175 grams, which is again six ounces of light muscovado sugar. But you can use any brown sugar in this. I just like the flavour of muscovado sugar. It gives it a lovely sort of caramel flavour. I've also got three eggs. I've got one teaspoon of custard flavouring. You can use whatever flavouring you like. You might want to use vanilla or leave it out altogether. I just like to add in a wee bit of extra flavouring. And I've also got one teaspoon of baking powder. And that's it. Like I said, super simple. Everything just gets dumped into a mixing bowl. You whack it into your pudding basin and that's you really. So yeah, let's move on and see what else we need. So this is the syrup that I'm using. This is just your traditional um, golden syrup by Lyons. And this is available everywhere. <laughs> So this is the one I recommend. And this is the flavouring that I'm using. Like I said, I've been using this custard flavouring quite a lot recently, but feel free to use whatever you like. You're also going to need a pudding basin. I'm using a Pyrex pudding bowl, but you could use stoneware if you have a stoneware dish. Just make sure it is heat proof. You're also going to need some string, just a couple of lengths of string. Make sure it's cotton. First thing we're going to do is grease our pudding bowl. You just do this with some butter and it's going to help your sponge cake come out at the end. It'll just slip out really easily. So yeah, the next thing you want to do is cut out a wee circle of grease proof paper and pop it into the bottom of your bowl. You're going to need a saucepan deep enough to house your pudding bowl and also a saucer at the bottom of your pan just so that your pudding bowl isn't sitting you know directly in the bottom of your pan i'm just using a pyrex dish from a casserole dish so just make sure your pudding bowl fits and then you'll need a lid as well so this is ideal because you are going to be steaming your pudding, so you want to make sure everything fits in nice and neatly. So you're going to want to grab yourself an electric mixer, and into your bowl, you want to pop three tablespoons of your golden syrup. Keep one back for the end. Now you can pop in your butter, then your sugar, and then your flour, and then your baking powder. And then your flavouring if you're choosing to use your flavouring. Like I said, this is so easy. <laughs> and then the last thing you want to pop in is your eggs. Everything, you know, it's just a one pot thing really. Or a one bowl thing. You want to get your mixer on and mix this until it's lovely and smooth and combined. This will only take a couple of minutes and I like to stop halfway through and just scrape down the sides of the bowl and underneath just in case my mixer has missed any bits. And then I'm going to pop it on again for another minute just to combine everything completely. And that's it. I mean, that this only took about a minute, guys. It's ridiculously fast. 
You can do this by hand, but I really do recommend using an electric whisk. It combines everything beautifully. So all you've got to do now is pop your pudding mixture into your greased pudding bowl. It's lovely and thick and velvety and so rich. This actually smells like, I don't know if any of you will remember, butterscotch pudding or butterscotch angel delight. This is, smells exactly the same. A lovely smell. So once all your pudding batter is in your bowl, you just want to grab a spoon and level out the surface as much as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect because obviously it will collapse down and then rise as it's steaming. The next thing you want to do is grab yourself a circle of foil and a circle of greaseproof paper. Just make sure your greaseproof paper is slightly bigger than your foil. Then you want to grease the top of your greaseproof paper with some butter. And you want to make a wee pleat in the centre of both. And this is just going to let, you know, the paper expand if it needs to during the steaming process. Because this is going to go over the top of your pudding bowl. Just make sure your foil is in the outside because it helps keep it all down and in place. So pop it over the top of your bowl and just sort of, you know, squeeze it round the top and the edges of your bowl. And it'll stay in place because of the foil. And that's your wee pleat there. Like I said, this is just going to leave room for the paper to expand if it needs to as your pudding is steaming. The next thing you want to do is grab yourself a length of string and just tie it round your bowl. Tie it quite tightly and then tie into a knot a couple of times just to make sure it's not going to come off as your pudding is steaming. And then just snip off your excess with scissors. I'm going to do another length of string just round the underside over the top and you're going to make a wee kind of handle so that when your pudding is ready, you can just lift it out and you're not going to burn your fingers. So tie it in a bow and then tie it again in a couple of knots to make sure it's not going to become, you know, unraveled when you're lifting it out of your pan. You want that nice and secure. And again, just snip off any excess with your scissors. Ideal. So now you want to get back over to your cooker Pop in your saucer or lid or whatever you're using in the base of your pan, followed by your pudding. And you want to boil your kettle. Make sure your pan is nice and warm at this stage because we're going to turn it down. But you want to fill up your water to about halfway up your pudding bowl. You want to put this in a very, very, very low heat, as low as you can for about two hours. It's just going to steam away nicely. And this was me one hour and 50 minutes later. Now I just like to test mine with a skewer. If your, as you can see, I've already done that. <laughs> if your skewer comes out clean, that, you know, you know your sponge is ready. And mine's was ready. Sometimes it doesn't take the full two hours, so I would check back after about an hour and 40 to an hour and 45 minutes, because it might not need the whole two hours. And once you're happy, you can go ahead and just lift your pudding out of your water onto a heat proof surface, because your glass bowl is going to be scorching hot, because it's been in there for a couple of hours. So be careful, and all you want to do is snip off your string. And you can lift off your lid. And I've got a wee dent there, but this is just the pleat of the paper. But don't worry about that, because it's getting turned upside down anyway. So you won't see that. And it's lovely and springy and moist. Oh, and it smelled incredible. I just burnt my fingers there. <laughs> if you need to, you can loosen it off with a knife. I didn't actually have to, but I wanted to show you. So just put a plate over the top of your bowl and flip the whole thing upside down. And you can just see that releasing there. And be very careful because obviously your glass is still very, very warm. Lift off your bowl and that's what you'll have left. Just remember to remove your wee disc of paper. 
and whilst it's still piping hot, you can pop on your reserved tablespoon of syrup. Oh, guys, this was wonderful. And it wasn't overly sweet. You think it would be, but it's not overly sweet. It's just right. This is incredible. Like I said, super easy. You know, if you struggle with making sponge cakes in the oven or that, and you know, I highly recommend this. You just cannot mess this up. And as you can see, you get a, quite a lot of portions out of this as well. This will easily do six people. And look how moist that is. It's beautiful. And this is best served, in my opinion, when it's warm with some nice vanilla ice cream or cream. Or if you're eating it cold, I would maybe pop some hot custard on that. But yeah, because it's, you know, we're just getting out of summer now into the winter. We just decided to have a wee bit of ice cream. But yeah, that was absolutely beautiful. Smelt fantastic, tasted fantastic. And a good couple of wedges of that gets sent round to Mr. What's for Tea's mother. She'll absolutely love this. She loves anything old school, obviously. I mean, she's in her 80s now, so she doesn't do as much baking and cooking and things as she used to. So if I make things like this, I do like to try and, you know, send some round because I know she will love this. So that was my wee recipe. And uh, let me know if you're going to give it a wee go because so many of you come back and say, you know, you've tried this or you've tried that or you're going to try this or that. And some of you even send me pictures on Instagram, you know, letting me see what you've done. So it's, I'm always chuffed to see that. So yeah. So thank you very much guys for popping over and checking out this super simple recipe and I'll be back later on with meals of the week and I'll be back again during the week with a wee poll because I've got a few things that I want to ask you about things that I've got coming up and I'm going to be doing comments of the week on meals of the week. I've picked out a couple of comments from you know during the week so I'll mention you then when I get to that. So until next time guys mind to take care of yourselves and from our house in Scotland to yours wherever you are lots of love and bye for now. Bye now.